the majority of the meeting is actually a guided meditation. So a couple of you have been on my meta retreat recently and you may have your own ways of doing it by now. So the guidance for anybody really is uh, optional. Uh, it can be helpful to check in with yourself and to just uh, practice together in the way that's suggested. We tend to get on a kind of a, a supportive energy train or something when we practice a particular way. But please do whatever feels good for you. And sometimes we do go through different categories of beings, if you like. Um, the request from the Vihara today was to spend a little time with a loved one. So we might do whatever is nourishing today for us and not go through too many categories. But um, whoever comes to mind or whatever comes to mind can be included in the field of your loving kindness. So as I was teaching in Devon, um, there is the cultivation, which is more of a samadhi practice, focusing on the phrases and the feelings that arise associated with those thoughts and phrases in your mind, sometimes images, uh, depending how your mind inclines. But there's also the metta that's an attitude and that just basically suffuses everything you experience. And if anything um, comes up that you don't feel it's appropriate to say, you know, may I be happy toward, <laughs> such as, feelings that are not very happy, like sadness or grief, then uh, we can also just embrace that in a sense, with a sense of loving kindness and acceptance. We don't have to change it or wish it away. So metta is not um, putting a layer over reality. It's more a way to meet it and a way to meet it kindly, gently, softly. So everything can be included. It's not only to all beings, it's to all mental states, to all physical feelings, to every situation in our life. And that's how um, meta becomes a way of relating. It's what's between us and the object in front of us right now. So uh, Jim Brown often says, the most important thing to do is to care. Yeah, Now is the most important moment, obviously. It's the only one you ever have. It's always now. Only now we can actually be aware of, we can think about the past, we can conjecture into the future, but it doesn't actually exist. We're only ever alive in this moment and uh, the most important thing to do in any moment is to care for it. He also says that the, this is from actually a, a old Russian book, I think, is it? Um, uh, it's not Dostoevsky, it's the other one, famous one. Chekhov. Who? Chekhov. No. Tolstoy. And the other one is, um, who is the most important person? And we usually think, oh, it must be me. <laughs> which is kind of true right because everything starts from us but actually it's the one in front of us now and again that can be applied to mental states so it's not uh only the person you happen to be with talk with look at you know maybe it's also the person that uh, lingers in your mind afterwards and maybe they come up with a sense of rage or dread or but at that moment that's the most important person to be kind to and sometimes it is ourselves so whatever's in front of us including mental states are the most important thing so see that you don't try to wish anything away with the meta but you just um uh use it as a way to soften towards experience to allow things to to be and to open out so I won't say much more because I do have a lung infection and it's bothering my throat as well today. You can hear that I'm a bit chesty and not much air at my disposal. So, um, yeah. Oh, you're Annika's little sister and she sends her warmest regards, me and Maria. Oh, so Annika has two sisters. Where's Mia go? Oh, there you are. She has two sisters. I know you're the one that I've met before. Okay, because normally you call Maria, but not me or Maria. Ah, so I didn't recognize you. You look younger also. Amazing. You're looking really well. She's busy with her six lovely chicken. Oh, Alika's a good friend of mine. Yeah, lovely. All right. So uh, please get settled. And if you want to just, I want to have another sip of tea. So do whatever your body needs right now. This is your body's moment to uh, get comfy and take your time and make that transition from kind of excitement of coming into the Zoom room, messing around with technology, <laughs> and then 
when you're ready, you can close your eyes, but retain that impression of being here with spiritual friends because it is a virtual Dhamma hall and we are somehow connected even across the seas and the continents. And uh, don't necessarily sit in the same way you normally would. Ask your body what it needs right now. If you're not sure, you can take inspiration from the black cat on Gloria's uh, screen. <laughs> Sitting there in an apron, is it? <laughs> okay. People are still coming. Maybe um, we can just check for another moment or two at the beginning. Oh, it feels like loving kindness to me today to give myself some hot tea. And remind myself that I do feel safe. I do feel cared for. I do feel it's okay not to be well. Yet to be here anyway. Sometimes we think if we're not well, if we don't feel good, if we're not feeling better, Maybe we shouldn't come, but actually, often they're the times we are most in need of that extra support and holding. So just landing in your body, softly. Feeling the ground or the chair and allowing the ground, the chair, the sofa to take all your weight. So you're descending a little bit, sinking in a little bit with each out breath. And as the muscles relax, sink down, the tensions soak into the ground. Also noticing your spine, your back. And allowing yourself to feel perhaps a little stretch. The support of the skeletal system, spine, ribs, the neck holding your head. Further allowing all those muscles, ligaments, tendons, the flesh, even the skin to just relax, held by your spine. held by the ground. Very little effort needed from you. And see if you can tune in to the warmth and the friendliness of this space. that's not very obvious to you, then imagine you're in a room filled with friends, warmth, everyone's on holiday, just chilling out, maybe there's a Gentle sunshine coming in the room. And you can feel that on your body. The 
You can feel this gentle warmth that's carried along with your mindfulness wherever your awareness lands, perhaps starting on the top of your head. Bringing to light any sensations you're feeling there. And suffusing them with warmth, friendliness, care. Inviting them to relax. And effortlessly just soaking through your face. The areas of tension, tightness, holding. Perhaps a sensation of expansion, softening. As you let those muscle tensions relax. the jaw to become soft. The neck. Shoulders. Imagining this warmth, your mindfulness along with kindness. Soaking right into all those knotty areas in your shoulders. Giving them permission to open and relax. Soaking down through your arms. Elbows, forearms, hands and fingers, fingertips, all the way down your arms. To each and every little finger, fingertip. Perhaps sensing the air on your skin, maybe warm or cool. a space around you, filled with kindness and care. And this warm sunshine soaks through your chest. Allowing your lungs to expand. To enjoy the breath coming in. Breath effortlessly going out. Back into the atmosphere to feed the plants, the trees. And returning like a gift from those plants and trees. Happening all on its own, you're just observing with kindness. Allowing the breath to relax you and to relieve any tension or tightness in the chest and the ribs. Allowing the breathing to fall down into your abdomen. Expanding the tummy. and allowing it to relax. Noticing any sensations in your abdomen, your tummy, intestine, and just giving them kindness and care.
Moving right down your back from the shoulders to the armpits, the ribs along the side, right round the torso. To every muscle in your back and all the organs inside. Whatever you notice as a sensation, as a physical experience. Allow kindness to flow to each and every part, even those parts you don't feel very much, a blank or empty, or those parts in pain. Just softly soothing, caressing those areas with this beautiful kindfulness the light and the warmth of the sun. And soaking through your hips, buttocks, the lower parts of your body. Noticing any sensations there, maybe pressure. Heaviness, lightness. Lowering down your thighs, around and through into the muscles, picking up any sensations that are manifesting right now. your knees, your lower legs, all the way down to the feet, the heels, the soles, the toes, right to the tips of the toes. Noticing any response as mindfulness and kindness travel through these parts of your body. Maybe throbbing or tingling, pressure, tension, vibration, whatever it is. Just relaxing and letting kindfulness do the work. And also allowing yourself to soak in any pleasant feelings. Connect with anything that's easy to be with, lightness or tingling, softness or warmth, anywhere in your body. and just opening your heart to those feelings. Letting them softly soothe the mind. And staying connected to any pleasant or neutral sensations, anything that's easy to be with. If it's possible for you, perhaps feeling into the area around the heart as well. Or just in front of the heart, the centre of the chest. I'm bringing a person to mind who's very dear to you. Someone who brings a smile to your face, to your heart, when you think of them. A 
good friend in your life with whom you have a nurturing, supportive, uncomplicated relationship with. And for now, leaving aside anyone who you have very intense or complicated feelings towards, just someone who is easy to be with, who really wishes you well, who accepts you for who you are, and you can relax with. Imagine they're there with you right now. And you're sharing these pleasant feelings, feelings of openness and warmth with them. Letting them know that you care. You might be able to get a sense of their presence, how it feels to be with them. Maybe an image of their face. And bring up a happy image. Imagine them smiling. Being at ease. Perhaps remembering a time you were just hanging out. Feeling that sense of beautiful warmth and friendship that's so precious in this world. And with this person's image or presence clearly in mind, Staying connected to any feelings in your body or around the chest. Offer this person wishes of loving kindness. So you're offering them a very precious gift. It could be subverbal, you could be speaking to them through your eyes, through your heart, or to give your mind a little bit more direction, you could choose a few phrases that encapsulate your deepest, most sincerely felt wishes of well-being, happiness, health, safety or ease for this very special being in your life. Perhaps something they'd wish for themselves. For example, something very simple like, may I be happy, may you be happy. May you be safe. May you be healthy. May you be at peace. I'm just limiting it to two to four phrases that resonate for you. Offering those phrases and listening with all your body and heart in the space between each phrase.
Noticing the resonance of that wish, that pure, beautiful intention. As it starts to develop the emotion of loving kindness, gently, slowly, softly, in its own time. Beating the phrases again and again. Clearly, rhythmically, with all your sincerity, connecting to the meaning of the metta and trusting in the power of these intentions to incline the mind to loving kindness towards this wonderful friend. Seeing them smile, relax even more as your heart starts to open up. Just enjoying the beauty of these intentions without forcing anything to happen. Staying relaxed and at ease.
And any time your mind wanders away, just refreshing this image of your friend, once again settling in their presence, and reconnecting with the meaning of loving kindness, the meaning of each phrase. Imagining each phrase being received, soaked up like a medicine healing this dear one's heart. And opening yours at the same time. Now, staying connected to any feelings of metta in the body of your mind. Gently smiling and waving your friend goodbye. Perhaps giving them a hug. Just a smile. Allow this matter to spread to everyone here in this room. To the people in front of me in the Vihara. To the people on Zoom. 
people you may know you've been practicing with before. Even anyone in your home. Recognizing we're all dear to somebody somewhere. We also are in need of love. So allow this metal to spread like a beautiful golden glow flowing between us. Strengthening as it's shared. Building the power of loving kindness by allowing it to spread. Giving and receiving becomes one and the same as our combined loving kindness becomes powerful and starts to spread throughout the globe, connecting us and spreading beyond the communities nearby. As though each of us were a little light shining in our particular place. Whether we're in America or Norway, Denmark, Germany, England. Wherever we are, spreading that warmth. Down the streets. into the homes, along the busy roads. Spreading beyond your immediate environment to all the people in your country, those who are suffering, maybe arguing, perhaps sick in hospital, dying right now. Imagining this beautiful golden glow of loving kindness, healing all the hurt. Bringing a moment of peace, both to those who are happy and those who are sad. And allowing this loving kindness to keep on spreading to whichever direction feels most natural to you. Coming across places where people are at war, in fear for their life, hiding, terrified. Places where people are being cruel. Inflicting injury, even death. Their hearts in turmoil. They've lost the path. Imagine our loving kindness reaching those places too. Hovering above the city or town like a beautiful golden glow, bringing hope, bringing peace. And settling down upon those people, upon those places of devastation.
as everyone puts those weapons down. Once again, regard one another as friends, friends in suffering, friends in joy. No one any different than us. Everyone dear to their mother, to their friends. Everyone's life so precious. Imagining this meta bringing peace. And even spreading that peace to places that are relatively safe, relatively prosperous. Even in those places, people suffer as well. Someone will be dying, someone will be being born. Someone is old, aging. Someone is young in the prime of life. Allowing this meta to spread to all of humanity, rich and poor, black and white, brown, indigenous people, people in Russia, China, small countries as well, Africa, all the little places, places we may not know even exist, the little islands in the middle of the Pacific, to so the North and South Pole, the Americas, Australasia, all across Europe and the Middle East, wherever there's life, let your meta flow. And this meta flows to non-human beings as well. To the smallest, most insignificant of creatures, the little tiny midges, the little ants and spiders, the earthworms, centipedes and snakes. The animals we think of as friends, maybe our dogs or cats, maybe the birds in the sky or in your gardens, the large animals and those on the brink of extinction as well. All beings, may their habitats be preserved. May they have enough to eat and live in safety. And all the creatures of the seas, the rivers, ponds and lakes, may they too be happy and well. Wherever there's life, at this moment, may they receive our loving kindness and feel a sense of peace. Even including the invisible beings as well, which may be there beyond our senses, beyond our capacity to see. May all those invisible beings, perhaps ghosts, beings who are lost, 
or devas who may be looking out for us, rejoicing in their goodness and their good karmic results. May they too be happy and well. Just allowing your mind to stay with this wish for peace, metta, love. To spread throughout this world, maybe even beyond to wherever there's life. And just resting there for a while. Leaving that sense of peace and warmth outside as though the earth were covered with a white sheet, very soft, delicate silk of peace. Gently, gently coming back into your home country. your city or town. Into this Zoom room. Into your home and into your body once again. Resting with any sensations that feel easy to be with. Rejoicing in the smallest, humblest sense of peace. Allowing it to gladden the mind. As I chant the final blessing to close the meditation. Sabe Sata. Sabe Pana Sabe Buddha Sabe Pogala Sabe Atta Bawa Pariapana Sabe Sabe Purisa Sabe Ariya Sabe Anariya Sabe Deva Sabe Manusa Sabe Vini Padika Awira Hontu Abya Paja Hontu Aniga Hontu Sukiatanam Pariharantu Duka Munjantu Yada Lada Sampadito Mawe Gajantu Kama Saka Sadu Sadu 
Sadu. <laughs> the last sadu is sadu, 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 he, 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 or ho, 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 or ha, 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 however you like. But there's always a he, he, something, or a she, she, if you want. <laughs> At the end. So I hope that you all feel a little bit um, primed to meet the day with a bit more love and kindness and softness and acceptance in your hearts and a beautiful sense that you do have spiritual friends and that we are somehow connected in goodness and um, we can't fix all the problems of the world but certainly I think groups like this coming together are really cause for news headlines we're not even in the news never mind in the headlines and it's a shame because there's so much goodness and we can just hope that other people can somehow tap into that we never know the power of these blessings and these practices and how it can arise to just bring a little bit more brightness to someone's day and they may go on to bring more to the next person and little by little we can make a, a better world even in a microcosmic way so I'm quite convinced of that and um, I think this community is a testament to that and I also have to share and it will be in the newsletter but you're here so you get the first heads up but we do. We didn't find. We did find a property to become our forest monastery, and um, one that wasn't a million pounds out of reach, as every other one was. And it's actually not far from Oxford. So this is such good news because there's a bikuni, there's a bikuni sangha in the future. Um, we do need to be close to local support. We do need to have. Uh, we live on alms food, we're alms mendicants, we don't use money, we don't drive or cook unless there's an absolute emergency and so far I've never had to use money and it's the one, it's not the one, but the the precept on, um, you know, not using money and also the celibacy I would say were the absolute pinnacles and sort of hallmarks of renunciate life and um, so far this has been made possible by the kindness of our supporters and um, and also being in a centrally located place. So it's really fantastic news. And of course, nothing is 100% until contracts are signed, but we have made an offer, we have had an offer accepted, and it's really a massive, momentous occasion in this project and for the Bhikkhuni Sangha and Buddhism in the UK. So this is eight years in the making and uh, it's happening after a lot of hard work, hence partly, my chest thing but there's been much more than that burnout and all kinds of difficult things to navigate along the way really long days seven days through no days off you know for, for years really and um, all with the support of everyone here and gradually we've grown a community so this is just a sign that the community is more mature and does need more space and is ready to have a place that we can come and stay and meet and have these sort of meditations there you know and um, invite our teachers as well and invite you all to be involved so um, I'm very joyful no matter how uh, unwell I feel presently it's actually nothing it's a temporary thing it's not like a chronic illness which you live with every day um, so it's all well worth it and there's a joy there despite all of that so uh, yeah you're welcome to be involved in any way you wish and uh, you can find links to our information in the box and uh, what else there's a new year retreat coming up 28 29 30th of the month you can find that online as well on our website under events and i think you can join online as well i think you can even join only for one day if you wish so it's organized by sheffield insight um so please send inquiries to them and uh, there'll be more things. There'll be a February retreat at Guy House, three days. There'll be a one-day retreat in London on the 24th of Feb on the true meaning of compassion. Um, there'll be a retreat of, t of seven days in America, in Washington State, a meta retreat. And uh, a retreat in Norway as well. So there's someone here from each country, I think. So hopefully there's something for everyone. And of course, everything gets put on our YouTube channel. So you can go in there when you need a little bit of uh, a boost. 
So thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful day. It is, uh, It was a longer meditation, I guess I needed that. So there's not a lot of time to share at the end. But if you do want to pop in a word about how you're doing now, just a feeling word, please do. It's lovely for everyone to hear from each other. Um, and obviously for me to hear from you as well. Um, and remember that metta is not only a pleasant feeling, yeah? Metta is an attitude to life. It's a disposition. It's a, it's a training. And uh, well done because you've just trained with many, many more uh, intentions of loving kindness, which hopefully will produce results in the most unexpected of times. So thank you for your comments. Grateful, feeling calm. Grateful meditation opens my heart. Feeling refreshed and calm, very supportive, less pain than when I started. Beautiful, more peaceful. Yeah, lovely. That's wonderful. So we can stop the recording and we'll ask you to unmute to wave goodbye.